2001 Molson Indy Toronto took place on July 15, 2001. It was the 10th round of the 2001 kart season and the 16th annual edition of the Molson Indy Toronto, and the first of two events that were held in Canada that year. The Team Penske teammates of Jill DeFerra and Elio Castroneves took the front row, with Kenny Brack, Tony Kanaan, and Alex Tagliani rounding out the top five. The race distance was scheduled for 95 laps, and this is how it got underway. Straggling at three, and they wave it off. They wave the start off. You can see Franchitti way back from Alex Tagliani there and then breaking up the rest of the field from sixth back. And as you can see, the start was called off as the flagman didn't think the cars were tightly enough packed up and he waved off the start so they would go around and try it again. Team Penske once again lined up at the front. Those were the two pole sitters from the last two years. And now Dario's in position this time. The field looks for the flag. Green flag is out. They're underway in the Molson Indy. Breck looks to the inside. DeFerrin takes across the front. Castroneves is outside alongside Breck. Breck slots into third place. Fastest part of the track here. Now a hard right-hander. Heavy on the brakes. Several rolls go too wide, and there's trouble. It looks like Dixon and Michael Andretti. And Michael. In turn number three, Michael Andretti and Scott Dixon make contact. Almost putting Andretti in the wall, he managed to stop the car, but unfortunately he stalled it and would need to be restarted. The full course caution would come out, and Michael would be able to get his car restarted without losing a lap. Michael would also come down pit road and top his car up with fuel. And fortunately for Michael, there is no damage done to his car. While everyone was focusing on the contact between Michael and Scott Dixon, this also happened. Now there were other things going on at the same time as Michael got in trouble. One of them involved Adrian Fernandez. Fortunately, we have an onboard with Adrian. Coming up through the 3-4 complex, watch what he does to Paul Tracy, this car there. Coming into turn five, he says, well, I'll take it, but I'm not gonna leave you any room at the exit. And watch when they look at this reverse angle of what happened here. He hangs Paul out to dry on the outside. There's no place to go. Paul narrowly avoids hitting the outside wall, but they do make contact right rear to left front. The caution was relatively quick, and the Penske teammates of Gilles DeFerrin and Ilio Castroneves would lead the field back to green. And it wouldn't take long for drivers to find trouble again. So coming back to the green flag, here we go again. Gilles DeFerrin leading for the first time this year. He's the defending series champion. His teammate, Elio Castroneves, in second. Kenny Breck is third. Franchitti with some good moves on the start, sitting in fourth now. Here comes Brian Herta as he battles with Jimmy Vassar. Oh, look at Oriol Servia move on Roberto Moreno. Tracy and Carpentier right behind. And Tagliani. Whoa! Oh, Moreno. Moreno's in trouble. Oh. And we got Dixon involved in Vassar. Also looks like Cristiano Damata's involved. Damata's in there, too. Boy, that's sad for Dick. Dixon. Dixon's going to get it going. New sponsor, NTN Bearings, on that car. This looks a little more serious. They go full course once again. Full course caution. Roberto Moreno goes for a spin, collecting Cristiano Nemata, Scott Dixon, and Jimmy Vassar, as cars dart to both sides to avoid the cars in the middle of the racetrack. And as if things couldn't get worse for Michael Andretti, he makes contact with Scott Dixon again, his right rear tire hitting the nose cone of Scott Dixon's car as he went past. When the race restarted, the battle for second got pretty racy going into turn number three. Out. He screams for the first turn, hard braking down into the right-hander. Oriol Servia takes a look to the inside. Alex Zanardi trying to move up. Now off the sweeper and on the long straight. Kenny Brack goes inside of Elio Castroneves. Castroneves gives him some room, but not enough. They touch coming off the corner. Still, they continue on. There was a part that went there, though. Yeah, it was a piece of the front wing end plate, it looked like. You notice Dario Franchitti slipped through on the maneuver. 
And now Tony Kanaan trying to take advantage of the loss of momentum from Castro Neves. The following lap, Paul Tracy would do Paul Tracy things going into turn number three. Open up the road. Oh, I've got to interrupt. We've got a problem over here, Gary. And it might be a course blocker as well. You got Tracy and Servia. They were battling for eighth place going into the right-hander at the end of the straightaway. Everybody else looks like they got by unscathed. Paul Tracy would get into the back of Oriel Servia with both cars stalling in the middle of the track. Unfortunately, this would bring out the full course caution again, but both drivers would continue on in the race. Gilles de Ferrin would bring the field back to green on lap 9, and we would finally get to see some green flag racing, as Patrick Carpentier makes a nice move going into turn number 1. On lap 32, Dario Franchini, who worked his way up to second place, unfortunately had to pull off in a runoff area with an engine problem, as he had no oil pressure. At the exact same time, Tora Takagi and Max Wilson would make contact going into turn number 3, bringing out the full course caution once again, this would erase Gilles DeFerrin's 7.5 second lead and bring him as well as a lot of the other leaders down pit road to make their first pit stop. Here's a replay of the incident that happened going into turn number three. Into second place, followed by Breck and Catherine Nevis. Here's what happened that brought out the full course caution. Tora Takagi crowds Max Wilson on the way into turn three. You got to give a guy some racing room. You just can't plow into him and expect him to turn and use him as your girlfriend on the way into the corner. That's just what happened. <laughs> well, Parker Johnstone with a pretty interesting analogy to describe that incident going into turn number three. But when the race restarted, Jill DeFerrin was still in the lead. If you're going to do it, you try to do it on these restarts. Elio Castro Nevis tried. Kanan moved to the inside, but for no apparent reason. He just likes that line a little better. The full course caution would come out once again when Oriel Servia and Tora Takagi made contact going into turn number three. Both those drivers previously already had an incident in turn number three, and this one would put Oriel Servia right out of the race. But Tora Takagi would continue on. On a champ car race, Tora Takagi punts Oriel Servia. Now watch from the onboard from Tora. They turn into the corner and Tora says, I'll just be hitting you now. And I've gained another spot the hard way. It's amazing that Takagi could continue on after that. After the smack with the wall, there's massive damage on Servia's car. You would think there'd be damage to the left front of Torres' car. Now watch on the turn in. Oriel's a little bit wide as he was trying to avoid the car in front of him on the initial turn in, trying to gain some room. But Tora comes in with just a huge head of steam. Gets Oriel, Oriel way up in the air. Looks like a Joey Chitwood Saturday afternoon event. Heavy damage to the left side of the Sigma Autosports car. Gilles de Ferrin would lead the field back to green. Unfortunately, this green flag run wouldn't last too long as Tora Takagi would find trouble again in turn number three. This time, the third time the charm, knocking him out of the race. Time Tora's done. Look at the left front. It is definitely damaged. So finally, I think he's being put out of his and everyone else's misery. Unfortunately, the broadcast never showed a replay of this incident. Most of the leaders would hit pit road, but some guys would stay out. This would put Elio Castroneves in the lead on the restart. Rex trying to work on Fernandez. Here comes Carpentier, and oh, that's going to leave a mark. Uh, you're not going to get that one done. They try to get back in traffic, but that wing's in trouble. On the restart, Patrick Carpentier would get into turn one a little hot, end up spinning his car and backing it into the tire barrier. Fortunately, this did not bring out a full course caution and Patrick was able to get his car moving relatively quickly, although with major damage to the rear wing. On lap 63, championship points leader Kenny Brack would pull off into the runoff area as the battery died on his car, putting an end to his day. On lap 65, Elio Castroneves would come in for a green flag pit stop, giving the lead to Adrian Fernandez and moving Michael Andretti up to the second position as there was some different strategies in the works at this point in the race. Unfortunately, mechanical issues would strike Elio Castroneves as he was fresh off pit road, as he went down Lakeshore Boulevard with smoke coming out of the rear. Elio would pull the car off in a runoff area, and it would actually catch on fire. Top of that, a little of the bodywork on the left side of the car, some blowback oil has apparently caught fire. Get out, Elio. They're waving yellow flag right there. Yeah, they're gonna blow them. And they're saying, come on, Elio, get out of there. They wave that hard enough, they'll get the fire out. <laughs> Where Castroneves' car was located, many of the teams 
knew that a full course caution would be coming out and they hit pit road just before that happened, including leader Adrian Fernandez and second place Michael Andretti. Adrian Fernandez may have caught a big break here. They've gone full course yellow, but he got into pit road. It all depends how quick can he get out of here. No changes. He wants all the fuel. Oh, he stole it. Unbelievable. Oh, it was his race to win. This could be it, folks. Oh, they're trying to get the starter in the back. They already had it over the wall, but they can't get it engaged. Here comes the rest of the cars, and there went, oh, Adrian Fernandez, a crushing blow. Throughout this whole pit stop sequence, there was a lot of weird things that happened and didn't really make sense. A lot of things. First of all, Michael Andretti is in the lead. He's in the lead because the team brought Tony Kanaan in and gave him a splash and go, trying to get him set to go. And then there was the story of Jill DeFerrin, for some reason, the Penske team stopped him. Gary, the question is why? Well, Roger Penske is in a deep conversation with his crew and has been talking with his driver, Gilles DeFerrin, and I asked him if we could get a word, and he said, we're trying to plot his fuel mileage right now. Now he's called one of the cart officials over for a conversation here on pit wall, and I'm not certain what this is all about, but yeah, head scratching really sums it up here, and if we get an opportunity, we're going to try to duck in here, and maybe Roger can clarify this scenario for us. Right now, he's still on the radio. You see that left hand on the earpiece that's pushing the button where he's talking to Gilles de Ferrin as the field comes through turn 11 and I believe they're looking for green. The pace picks up with Michael Andretti at the front. Tagliani sends it up trouble way back in the field and it's Mamo Gidlin. So that's going to keep us under the full course caution again for sure. Italy was 16. So between Adrian Fernandez stalling on pit road, Tony Kanon coming in to top up, and Jill DeFerrin pinning because they were unsure if they were going to make it on fuel, it handed Michael Andretti the lead despite everything that's happened to him. And on the restart, Mimo Gidley unfortunately got into the wall, putting an end to his day, bringing out the caution again. Michael Andretti would lead the field back to green on lap 76. Ooh. Michael certainly is carrying enough fuel to make it to the finish. The question becomes Tagliani and Zincara sitting right behind him. Zincara closes on the back of Tagliani. Unfortunately, going into turn number three, Gilles de Ferrin's day was about to go from bad to worse. Pictures provided for us by Molestar of Canada. We thank our colleagues for the coverage. You see teammates Guzelman and Dixon looking racy coming down into turn three. He's trying to outbreak him on the outside here. He's watched Michael do it several times. <laughs> oh, well, they get away with it. And on that restart, oh! Oh, no. these guys didn't. And one of them's DeFerrin. DeFerrin, Jordan Jr., and Kanan. And the right rear is just gone on that one. Maybe he can make it back, but it's going to do a lot of damage. Jan Bikas, what about Kanan? You were asking, Paul, why on earth would they pit him out of the lead to take fuel? It turns out they had a problem with the fuel nozzle on the previous stop. So that's why they did not have enough fuel to make it the distance. Now, well, that explains it then, because it was a surprise to see him suddenly back in the pits. And you have to consider, Paul, if they hadn't have pitted, uh, we could see the contact between Max Pappas DeFerrin and then DeFerrin over the top of Cristiano Damata who simply has just been in the wrong place so many times this year, an innocent bystander, once again a victim. But you have to consider if Penske hadn't pitted DeFerrin when he did, that he would have been in that position in the first place. This contact would put an end to Gilles DeFerrin's day, as well as Michel Jourdain Jr. and Cristiano D'Amata. The race would be restarted on lap 79 with Michael Andretti still out front. Just as the green flag comes out for Michael Andretti, they're racing again, 95 laps, the scheduled distance. That's 15 laps away. You ride with Bruno Junquera. Now further with Adrian Fernandez, who runs in fifth place. Junquera is up in third now. But here's part of this whole game. Andretti leads it. Behind him, Tagliani and Junquera are 29 laps. Boy, look at Fernandez. On lap 87, Bruno Giancara and Christian Fittipaldi made contact going into turn number 3, both of them nosing into the tire barrier. This would bring out the full course caution again, erasing Michael Andretti's 7.4 second lead. Tagliani, you know what that means for him. That means he'll have enough fuel, and maybe he can make a run at Andretti after all. And you remember at Milwaukee, it was the same sort of applause for Giancara in a similar situation. Feel there's a certain amount of sarcasm uh, in those uh, uh, accolades. 
Well, let's see how we get our synchronized parking routine here. Fittipaldi coming up down the long pit straight, goes to the outside. And now we wait to see what happens from this camera angle. Oh, here it is. Uh, it's very there interesting. It uh, certainly not room for two cars if you can't get one car through there successfully. Well, the full course caution is out because of this incident. Guncara and Fittipaldi. Well, Michael Andretti hoping to run for the finish. Tagliani, well, they think that he can run with him now. Tagliani in second. They go for the first turn. Zanardi looks inside of Fernandez. Puff of smoke there. Didn't seem to be the leaders. Now, it looked like Fernandez just locking up the tires on the way into the corner. Michael Andretti would lead the field on the lap 90 restart, and this would be the run all the way to the finish. Can you believe this? Starts 13th, falls all the way back to the back, comes all the way forward. We mentioned 13th as lucky. It sure looks like it's going to be for Michael Andretti. Looking for his 41st career win. The checkered flag's out. Seventh win in Toronto. So Michael Andretti scores the victory, his one and only win of the 2001 season, his seventh in Toronto, which is the most all time. There were four lead changes throughout the race, with five drivers reaching the front of the field. Gilles DeFerrin led a total of 49 laps, which was the highest of anyone in the race. There were 11 cautions for 31 laps, which was a new track record. And as I previously mentioned, it was Michael Andretti's seventh win in Toronto, which surpassed the record for most wins in a card event, whom Michael himself previously jointly held with Al Inter Jr. with six. And pretty similar to another cart video that I covered on this channel, the attrition rate was pretty high with 11 of the 26 starters finishing the race. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. It is Honda Indy weekend here in Toronto, and I'm pretty excited for race weekend. I will be there on my way home from work today. I saw Alex Pillow and Scott Dixon's haulers on the highway, and I am pumped up for this weekend. Subscribe to the channel for more great IndyCar content just like this, and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I appreciate all the new subscribers, and I hope to catch you all in the next one. Take care.